Bio Cup time. Welcome, hello, hi. It's the Bionicle Inspiration series, and today we're going to do it. Well, what we always do. We're going to talk about some cool Bionicle mocks. We're going to have a little bit of a discussion about the tips and techniques that are going on in them, and I'll give you some advice and other things that can hopefully inspire you to build your own cool stuff. And as of the time of this recording and the time that I'm posting this episode, it is Bio Cup time. A very exciting time. So I figured, hey, let's take a look back on past years of the Bio Cup and see what some of the other contestants were doing, the different things that they did, the cool part usages, how they approached the theme, all that sort of stuff. And if you are planning on entering the Bio Cup, maybe this can be a bit of uh, inspiration for you and your entries that you might be doing. And if you're not familiar with the Bio Cup, there'll be links in the description to the Flickr group. It's the big Bionicle contest of the year. All the information you need is over there on the Flickr group, so be sure to check it out. You yourself can enter. There's no reason you can't. Uh, and it's just a, an excuse to have a bit of fun and build some cool stuff and participate in one of the biggest Bionicle contests there is, so yeah. But also, hey, if you're not entering the Bio Cup, it's also just an excuse to look at some really, really well done mocks, because these are all really, really awesome, and this is also the excuse that Ben has to be like, hey, this is the theme without a theme, because none of these mocks really share any unique theme, other than the fact that they were all entered into the Bio Cup, which is technically the theme of this episode, but for all those people who are like, hey Ben, why don't you just do an episode without a theme? This is kind of that episode. So, without further ado, let's begin. We'll take a look at a whole bunch of different mocks from the 2020 Bio Cup. And hey, remember when I promised that I would continue and finish the coverage of the uh, 2020 Bio Cup? Now's that time, baby. I'm finally doing it. I'm doing it. I promised. I delivered. Took a bit of time, but I got there. It was 2020. What do you expect? It was a really, really messed up year. And I think as Bio Cup was happening, there was a lot of weird stuff happening in the world. And, you know, just didn't have the time or was just, you know, maybe not culturally appropriate at the time to be recording because of uh, certain things that are happening in the world. So, hey, you know, we're doing it now. It's a blast from the past. It's, uh, com you know, fulfilling promises. And, uh, hey, it's nice to just take a look back and learn from the past to help you in the future. All right, let's begin. The very first mock we've got today is by Redverse, and this is called King Kuzma and his Indigo Vortex. This is a really, really awesome mock. Uh, I immediately recognize that this was from something. This is King Kuzma from, I'm um, reading the Wikipedia. It says Summer Wars. It's a film from 2009. Not familiar with it, like I said, but hey, you know, I'm sure some of you are, and you're like, oh, it's the guy, like, cool, you know. So uh, that alone is, of course, very striking and very cool. But the reason this was specifically built, so this was actually built for the final round of the 2020 Bio Cup, and specifically what the theme was asking of the contestants was that they had to mash up one entry from the Redemption round, and one entry from the main round of uh, the Bio Cup. And they just mash those two builds together and come up with something cool. So let me show you what it was that was mashed up here. Uh, they were uh, a variety of different builds. The first one was by Yannick Gotts, and it is Marge and Allium. This cool little bunny and snail combo, fantastic looking mock. Uh, additionally, it was um, taking obviously inspiration from King Kuzma, like I said before. And also, it took a little bit of inspiration from a mock by King Marshy called The More Things Change, The More They Stay the Same. I guess you could say that that's the, the bike that took the bulk of the inspiration from this guy here. And then additionally, it took inspiration from another build because, you know what, Red versus like, screw it, I'm going to do multiple different things. He took a bit of inspiration from Buttloaf Build's mock Blue Dynamite. So you can kind of see the little bits here of, of, of how it all sort of meshed together. It was kind of the the bunny elements, specifically the ears uh, that he used for King Kuzma and then, um, or Kazma. I don't know how to pronounce it. Don't at me. I haven't seen the movie. I'm not familiar with it. I apologize. Uh, the handlebars, I guess, from Butloaf's build and kind of just the general motorcycle elements of it. Uh, and then the big wheel at the bottom, I suppose, takes inspiration from King Marshy's mock there. So really nice way of just combining those builds together. And also, I think just a, in general, a really clever idea to, to do that. Take a look at the mocks from other uh, rounds of the Bio Cup, or just from cool mocks that you really enjoy, some of your favorites, some of the ones that really stood out to you. Or just, you know, look up your favorite builder and see what sort of stuff they've built, and take little things from each of them, put it together, and kind of mash it up into one awesome mock. There's nothing wrong with doing that. You can create some really cool stuff with it, and, you know, obviously it depends how you do it, but it's not inherently, like, stealing either, because if you, you know adapt a specific part from one mock, something from another one, put it together, apply your own little personal touches to it, and it becomes your own unique thing. And, you know, sure, credit the original builders, of course, but, uh, you know, that could be a really cool way to 
uh, motivate you to, to, to build something. So w whether that's for the bio cup or not, you know, I think that's just in general a really cool idea. Well, let's talk about the mock specifically. What sort of cool stuff's going on here? Well, immediately some things that uh, really stand out for me uh, is the boot design on this guy here, or Canada foot design. I don't really know. Uh, it's using a couple cool pieces in some creative ways. So initially we're getting this... Um, this white, uh, large figure armor, round smooth. That's a weird name. Round smooth, large, yeah. Uh, Le Lego pieces notoriously have awful sounding names, but that is being used here in white for the sort of front of the boot shoe foot thing. Uh, that specifically, if you're interested, comes in white in the First Order Stormtrooper Star Wars Ultra Build set. Pretty cool character, pretty cool set, and I think also just a really helpful, cool piece. I've actually spotlighted a few of them recently in some more recent Biotacon Inspiration series episodes, so uh, something to consider. And also this piece, with, with another really hard to, to, to say name, and not a very catchy name, not the name of your hot up-and-coming band, uh, cylinder 4x4x1, four by four by two thirds with pinhole and center bar. Yes. So that's also been used there. That's kind of like the top of the foot, almost kind of like the, I don't know what you call that on a shoe or a, or a boot or whatever, the sort of like lip or the, the, the top bit of the shoe. I don't know. It looks cool. And I think it forms a very nice looking foot design. Both of these pieces come in a variety of different colors as well. So, hey, you know, if you've got a few lying around, you could use it for a, a nice looking sort of sneaker design, perhaps on uh, one of your Bionicle mocks. I, I think it just uses those pieces fairly well. And I think they're fairly common pieces too, you know, you, you can get some of those um, those more rounded pieces, I'm not going to try and say that name again, uh, in a bunch of different system sets. I want to say they came in a few binocle sets as well. Uh, they're fairly common, and, and that Star Wars Ultra Build piece, also pretty common in a majority of those sets. They even appear in some like Hulkbuster sets and things these days, so a bunch of different ways you could get that. I think it's a pretty easy design to uh, recreate yourself. I also quite like the uh, the ear design here, using some more system-focused pieces, but I think it really effectively matches the source material there, which I absolutely adore. And in general, I think the head design's really well sculpted too, actually. Just uh, if you're planning on building some sort of bunny-inspired mock, might be worth just studying the, the building techniques on this head design here, try to reverse engineer it yourself, you know? Getting a bit of reverse engineering is always a, a good skill to have if you're looking to increase your repertoire and your skill set there. Also, just given the fact that it is based off King... Kuzma, Kazma, Kazuma, however you want to pronounce it. Um, I, I also just like that idea too. If the theme of the bio cup, you can kind of shoehorn in your favorite character that you've always wanted to build, whether it's from an anime, a video game, a movie, or whatever, do it. Because if that's enough to motivate you and you, you really do want to enter the bio cup or any kind of contest that might be happening, it's certainly worth doing. It's certainly worth considering. So uh, yeah, by all means, build some of your favorite characters or build characters you really like from movies or, or different things like that. And this is a good example of that. The final thing I like is the finger design on this mock here. It uses a pretty weird and obscure piece that is not overly common these days. And on top of that, it's not a very good piece. Uh, I say that because it's very brittle. I do have some and I've broken a few and some of them have just come in bulk lots that I've bought and they've just been broken. Uh, it is this piece. It's called arm piece straight with two and three fingers. Uh, it's an interesting piece. Came in some old like classic space sets. Some of them even came in like... I think they were Aquazone sets. They're in a few sets, but there are a lot of older sets. Um, and yeah, like I said, they're very brittle. Uh, th there's a reason Lego doesn't make them anymore because they aren't really that uh, sturdy, you know? But uh, they're a really cool piece. If you do happen to have any in your collection and, you know, you treat them carefully because they, they break easily, um, they can create some really cool stuff like this fantastic looking finger design here. And uh, yeah, it looks super cool. It looks really, really cool. So um, something to consider if you have some of those pieces lying around. They make a beautiful looking finger design like that. It's awesome. So yeah, absolutely brilliant mock here. I love what Redverse has done. Love your work. Let's move on to the next mock now. This is by Sergei Rakamanov. This was also entered into the final round of the Bio Cup. And this is called Retirement. So... This is also, again, like I said, same uh, same concept for the round there. So he combined a few different mocks here to form this one. The first one was a mock by Bella Cure, and it is called Life Finds a Way. J just very quickly, I adore this mock. This is such a cool concept. The idea of, you know, some poor innocent Toa or Bionicle being has died and plants are just growing through its skeleton. That's kind of creepy. 
but also kind of cool, you know? It's like some sort of post-apocalyptic world and it's all overgrown with nature and stuff. I think it's a, an awesome idea. And I love that um, Sergei's, uh, you know, taken that and expanded upon it. The other mock that he took inspiration from was a mock by VB and it's called Still in the Fight. I think I've talked about this before in past episodes, but it's, uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. Love this uh, concept of a you know, lone fighter who's lost all his limbs, but he's like, no, I'm still going to fight. It's really cool. Uh, and I think fits the, the, the concept well, but we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, the other mock that this took some inspiration from was a mock by King Marshy, and this is called Bionisa Tree. So like Bionicle Bonsai Tree, babidi boo, really cool. So yeah, when we uh, take a look at this actual mock now by Sergei Rakamanov, I think we can see all the different bits that it's uh, certainly taken inspiration from, the Bonsai Tree being this big uh, you know, tree that this guy's resting on. He's more or less rebuilt that lone fighter from before, uh, and of course, the overgrown concepts just in general expanded across this whole mock. I think this is a great combination of uh, different mocks and, and putting it into one there, because uh, it really kind of continues the story of that lone fighter mock, the still in the fight one. Um, and it, I love that idea of taking someone else's mock that already had a pretty clear story to it, and then another builder coming along and continuing the story. I think that's just a really cool way of. Um, just a cool cool sort of sense of community and it's certainly something you could do too you know has has a, a friend of yours or um you know someone you know or just someone you look up to have they built something really awesome that that you really like and maybe you even like the story that uh, goes with it could you expand the story you know build the mock yourself and build it in a, a different stage in its life or you know build it as it's you know, retiring or all that sort of stuff you know i think that's uh just a really, really clever idea and just awesome to see the progression of this character across two different builders' uh, imaginations there. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, I love the idea that, you know, he's maybe given up with his fighting a little bit. Now he's resting up against this tree and nature's growing through him. And you know, whether he's passed on or he's, you know, still fighting through it, you know, it's, uh, it's cool. It's just a, a nice bit of uh, personality behind this character here. It's really, really nice. Taking a look at the tree design here, because I think he's done a bang-up job on it. I love the idea of the leaves being those uh, Liwa feet pieces there. Weird to think that feet are being used for, for leaves. It's just an odd sentence, but uh, it works pretty well. The fact that behind them they have the very traditional Lego leaf pieces there uh, just looks really good. And I think it's one of the better uh, Bionicle trees that I've seen. I have seen a few, uh, probably featured them in past this episodes. But uh, it's, it's one of the best that I think very effectively combines system pieces in with Bionicle pieces like that. It's just a really solid looking tree design and certainly makes sense for, uh, you know, the final round of the Bio Cup. It's just really well designed. I think that's a great combination of those pieces. It looks awesome. I still love some of the roots using some of those larger claw pieces in brown. They, they have this sort of like thick kind of like girth to them, I suppose. Uh, just looks like that of a, a root of an ancient looking tree. Uh, and then all the different um, branches, just simply using different limb pieces like that. Really pops, really looks pretty solid, pretty nice. Additionally, I love uh, the sword in the background there, how it's just kind of been stabbed into the ground. And the choice of putting that little Rakshi spine piece there, because naturally there is a sort of um, slit in the Rakshi back piece there that you would insert the, the spine into. Uh, and so just sort of resting the sword into that. It just looks like a little sort of, you know, mound of grass and uh, it just looks nice, but also just makes sense to actually utilize the natural gaps inside uh, that specific binocle piece there. It's, a, it's just a, a really clever idea and um, just sort of, again, continues the story because originally that sword was in his mouth. Now he's, you know, sort of stabbed it into the ground. Yeah, it's cool. It's really nice. I like how that's overgrown as well with some uh, flex tube and other leaf pieces and things. It's, uh, it just looks cool. So yeah, brilliant mock, great storytelling, and I just, I really adore the concept of uh, continuing the story of someone else's mock uh, with, you know, your own imagination, and it's a really, really cool idea, and I hope other people do that, because I, I don't know, that, that really tickles me. I like that a lot. So, love your work there, Sergey. Let's move on to the next mock. This is a mock by Vlad Lesin, and this is called Talalok, something like that. Not sure how to pronounce that, but uh, it says in the description here that this is the Aztec god of rain and thunder, which I think makes a lot of sense when you look at the mock here. A lot of that's pretty easily conveyed on this guy here. I love that he's holding this sort of ancient looking jar and there's this water pouring out of it, and that's just a brilliant use of those two pieces there. These are the mask and weapon piece from the uh, Bionicle set called Barracks. You can pretty easily see those pieces that he's used there. Just sort of overlapping the two like that, it really does look like water just flowing out of that vase there. It's um, awesome. It's really, really cool. Brilliant use of those two pieces there. 
Uh, taking a look at the rest of this mock here, there's a plethora of other fantastic looking um, part usages. I love the inclusion of what I believe is the Kylo Ren torso piece there on his torso. Just how it's kind of sandwiched in between some of the like the clouds around his his um, his lower waist there uh, and the necklace up top. When you kind of squint your eyes or if you just kind of look at it quickly, it almost sort of looks a bit more like abs. You know, it, it starts to fade away from that just like Kylo Ren torso pattern with that really interesting intricate pattern that he has naturally and you stop seeing that like utility belt that he's got or whatever and it almost just looks like he's got a six pack i don't know that's at least what i'm seeing there and uh, i think it's really really fitting and really cool really nice to see him just sort of neatly hide some of the more star wars elements of that piece uh and just sort of strip it back and really focus on that print there that's really cool it's not something you see every day i love that some other stuff that i love i really enjoy the um necklace that he's got there just a, a big mesh of what appears to be a clear flex tube with a whole bunch of other you know um, carrot top pieces and other interesting parts but those interesting kind of light blue pieces there they come on they, they appear in a, a few different sets whether that's like exo force sets or a few other things but they also specifically come on some of the knight's kingdom sets which was kind of a sort of system construction adjacent uh theme and uh, these were some of the sort of older kind of ratchet joints that you could use for you know, quite similar to your, your CCBS and your other, you know, construction focused um, ball and socket sort of system things. Although it wasn't really any balls or sockets per se. It was more just those like ratchets and connection things. I don't know what you'd specifically call it, but that's where those come from. And it's nice to see them being used in a, in a very different way here. And it uh, looks like that a very sort of traditional necklace of sorts. It's uh, it really pops. It's really pretty. I also love, in general, just this, this overall head design. The headdress is gorgeous, using all those leaf and tail pieces. It looks so vibrant and, and, and striking. But this head design here looks also just as beautiful. It's using a, a bunch of different um, sand blue uh, system pieces, but it's also using a whole bunch of uh, very obscure pieces from this old dinosaur wave of Lego sets, whether it's the uh, dinosaur head that's being used sort of front on and it's he's put some eye details inside of it and it sort of forms the like eyelids almost and then above that they're almost sort of like eyebrows are using the little dinosaur arms in sand blue like that and uh yeah it uh, really works quite well for a very uh very striking looking face design there it's really beautiful to see and some very very creative part usages there for sure I also love this uh interesting interesting like kind of cloud design here and using some of these lightning pieces for I, know, I saw it more as rain, but I guess it could also be lightning, you know? It makes sense, since that is what he is the god of. But uh, I love that. I also just think those are really effective cloud designs. And hey, you know, the fact that um, he's kind of uh, put them across his body there kind of gives it this sense of scale. You know, you look at those clouds and you go, oh, yeah, I know what clouds look like from looking up at the sky. And, you know, the fact that this character is you know, far larger than them, it really gives it this sense of scale that he's this, you know colossal towering god of sorts and uh it's pretty cool it's pretty cool it's a great way to just showcase that this is a huge mock without actually having to you know build a huge mock and use thousands of pieces you can just you know play around with scale in that sense it's really cool really clever so yeah love that really awesome really striking really brilliant looking uh, mock here lots of uh, lovely piece usages and just yeah it looks really cool that's what matters so love your work let's move on to another mock this is by our boy andrew Steele, and this mock is called the dark Jin. So, a lot of cool stuff on this guy here. Really, in general, just a visually sort of striking uh, look to this character here. He's certainly got a, a very strong genie-like look to him, whether it's that sort of, you know, big buff six-pack and the sort of flowing kind of like wisp of legs or sort of, it's not really a tail, but I guess you could kind of call it that. Whatever you, I, wisp, I suppose, is the word. Uh, it very much looks like that of a genie, which is, of course, the intent. And, you know, he's got a very fantastic-looking little uh, gold genie lamp that he's built there. And I love the way he's got that um, ice claw tail piece there, uh, how that just looks like that sort of flowing out uh, and expanding uh, genie tail. Very, very fitting and very cool. But the way that that kind of expands out, how it transitions into a lot more of uh, this sort of mesh of different uh, CCBS bone and uh, armor pieces here... I actually really like that design, you know? It, it's fairly simple to recreate. He's just got a bunch of translucent and black and sometimes grey uh, Hero Factory bone pieces. They appear to be quite small for the most part. And he's just kind of wrapped them around each other. And it actually really starts to look like this almost sort of like flowing kind of gas or mist that you would associate with that of a genie, you know? Something like in Aladdin or in D&D &D or whatever. 
and it's really cool. It's quite a simple but very effective looking design. And, you know, this combination of colours too, it looks like this sort of slightly sinister but also quite mystical uh, sort of mist or, or um, magical wisp of sorts. I think it's just very nice, very visually pleasing, and just kind of makes sense, you know? It's not an overly difficult technique. I guess it's something you could fairly easily do yourself. And if you're someone who bought, you know, a pretty decent amount of ccbs focus sets, I'm sure you yourself have a, a bunch of these uh, bone and armor pieces lying around. So maybe this is a design that you could fairly easily build yourself for a BioCup entry or just a, a hot and up-and-coming mock, you know? I think it's a really clever design, and we might see it again in, a, in another up-and-coming mock in this episode. But yeah, I think it works really well here, especially on this slightly larger scale here, because specifically on the sort of lower leg part of this mock, um, Andrew's really been able to go quite ham on it and just really uh, pour in a whole bunch of the, the different pieces there, really wrap them around each other and create this almost sort of like swirling mystical mist there. It's a really solid design. I think it really accomplishes it well because it looks almost you know exactly like your, your typical genie. I also love the head design on this. It's very intricate looking, very kind of system focused head design using a plethora of different pieces, but I love the specific mouth design using those two gear pieces and putting them on their side like that. And it looks like this big sort of slightly evil toothy grin there. It's uh, really impressive. The gold highlights are also really cool. I think on the waist, that sort of uh, belt that he's got going, that looks like a black dots bracelet. Really nice way to... Uh, just achieve that very organic looking belt design that very neatly wraps around the waist of this mock. And also, hey, you know, I like my dots pieces. I think they're, they're very versatile and helpful parts. Um, just cool to see that being used very, very well on a Bionicle mock here. And yeah, just in general, a lot of really nice part usages and some uh, really effective characterization that's been conveyed in this mock with some pretty cool techniques. So yeah, love your work. Very good job. The next mock now is also by Vlad Lassin, and this is Nick Wilde. So I specifically wanted to touch upon this because I think this is a great way of expanding on a pretty ordinary theme. Uh, the theme for this round of the BioCup was simply canines. Uh, and, you know, he's built that of Nick Wilde here from the fantastic movie Zootopia. And I think that's great. You know, sure, you could just build your typical dog or, or whatever, but, you know, going and branching out and building something a little bit more iconic from, uh, you know, popular culture... Yeah, makes sense. And when you can do something this awesome where you really sort of sculpt with your Bionicle pieces and really effectively make that of like a little bust of, of this character here, it's um it's awesome. It's 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 really striking, it's really different as well, you know. I think that's that's kind of something that not a lot of people do these days with Bionicle pieces, is that that almost sort of like sculpture uh with with Bionicle parts of really building on a slightly larger scale but uh really effectively trying to recreate something from popular culture or just uh, you know make a, a sort of 3d prop of sorts or a bust of a person you know whatever um because it's certainly difficult to do with bionicle but it is a really fun challenge and if you really want to maybe this is something to not do for the bio cup just because it might take a bit of time but maybe it's something that you've you've played around with before if you really want to do that sit down with all your different pieces and really dedicate the time of saying okay how could this piece insert with another part and really create this sort of very smooth shape that perfectly represents the the ears on this character or whatever, you know? It's it's probably a lot more of a sort of methodical, thought-provoking process because you, you really got to sit and, you know, um, see how these pieces all interact and try to create this really sort of fluid shaping where there's not any gaps or things just don't look, I don't know, obscure or odd. I think it'd be a very different approach to building, but one that has a very rewarding result if you have the patience for it, I suppose. It's certainly a lot of trial and error. You just got to, you know, try stuff. And if it doesn't work, try something else. Just see what you can do. But, I mean, look at this end result. This is absolutely gorgeous. And for the most part, yeah, it's pretty much all Bionicle pieces for the most part. I don't know. It's just absolutely incredible. Vlad is a, is a top-tier builder, you know. There's a reason he's won Bio Cup in the past. But, I don't know, look, maybe this might be a little bit too complicated for you. But, hey, let's try and break it down a little bit. Let's sort of see what specific pieces are being used. And, uh, yeah, maybe that could uh, inspire some, uh, just some general building tips and ideas for you if you do want to build something in a similar fashion. So, the eye design here, which appears to be using some different dishes and rounded plates and things to form the actual eyes... But the top bit there, the sort of eyelids, that's using some minifigure capes. They appear to be uh, dark red in colour. I think that's a great way of doing it, because it really perfectly matches his facial expressions, and um, just, yeah, it's just a brilliant way of recreating that eye design. And, you know, don't forget to play with your cloth, because you can really 
nicely just sort of manipulate that, you know, have it have a slight curve to it, have it sort of lift up or lift down perhaps. Um, it's just a really fun piece to be able to kind of manipulate and play with. So something to consider. Additionally, he's used a fairly ordinary piece. You can see it sort of on the sides of the cheeks here. It's this orange uh, Hero Factory torso piece that came on Julius Nex. Came on his 2.0 version and his 3.0 version, so came in a couple sets there. But that's been sort of neatly inserted on the sides there. It kind of curves forward just under the eyes as well, which uh, you know helps to fill in a few more of those gaps there very nicely and sort of buff out his cheeks a little bit. Seems very fitting. So that's a pretty ordinary piece to be able to use for this. But if we want to go slightly more obscure, because he has used some slightly more obscure pieces, the nose is a black Krana piece. Of course, the Krana came on the different Borok sets. It's kind of debatable if you want to say that's obscure, but, you know, it is a fairly old piece at this point. Well, I believe the Borok were like 2002 or 2003, I think. Something like that. Um, so, you know, in that sense, it's a little older and it is a little bit more... You, know, it's, you don't see Krana being used that often, but... It does really work quite well for the, the nose of a fox like that. So yeah, certainly something to consider if you want to use some slightly different parts and still uh, achieve a really nice part use there. And I, I think that's a, a great just general rule of thumb for the bio couple, or just any mock in general. If you can play around with really weird and obscure pieces and use them in creative ways, it's always just really striking to see because, you know, not everyone does it. But if you do it, yeah, you, you look a little better, don't you? And you, you definitely get a few extra points if you are into the bio cup using some some clever piece usages and specifically with more obscure stuff. So something to consider. You don't have to do it, but it'll certainly get you a few more points. But yeah, look, overall, I think this mock is absolutely fantastic. It just looks so visually striking and perfectly captures the original source material. Love your work. Next mock now, this is by Silvac the Mockist, and this is called Don't Call Me a Parasite. And... On the subject of Parasite, that was his theme for this round of the Bio Cup. He, I'll read what he said here. He said, it was based on the sub-theme of Natural World, and the theme within that sub-theme was Bacteria and Parasites. And pretty fitting, you know, it's based off uh, a line from the um, Venom movie, uh, and he's built this absolutely awesome-looking Venom mock with Eddie Brock and the, the Venom symbiote kind of, you know, coming outside of him and actually, you know, physically speaking to him. Really, really awesome design, and... Uh, it uses a very similar technique to that of what we saw on Andrew's genie from before, of just this sort of mesh of different uh, Hero Factory bones there, and uh, just kind of intertwining them together, like sort of twisting rope or, together or something. Uh, and it actually really effectively looks like that of the symbiote from the Venom movie, or just kind of from any interpretation of Venom from comics or animated films or whatever. It's a really, really solid way of doing it. And of course, Andrew's Genie was built on a larger scale, so it of course used more of these, but this is a smaller one, so it's using a little less, but it's nice to note that if you do use it on a larger scale or a smaller scale, it can still look really good. So if you have a bunch of them, or only a few of them, and you want to do something similar to this, it might be a little bit easy given that uh, it's, a, it's a pretty versatile technique here. The Venom head design on this is awesome, using um, some system teeth pieces to form the bulk of the mouth, and that eye is just simply a, a sort of white core piece there. It really perfectly looks like that of Venom's head. It's uh, really cool. Um, some of these images you'll note, of course, that uh, he's photoshopped out the stand, which, you know, if you've got some Photoshop skills, could be a fun thing to do. But also it's nice to note that this, you know, needs a little bit of support to, to, to hold itself up. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that, of course, you know. Sometimes you need a, a stand for your mock, and there's, you know, no harm in doing so. Because you can still build something really cool, even if it does or doesn't have a stand, you know. But I also love this version of um, Eddie Brock here. You know, he has a very similar color scheme to that of what he had in the movie as well, which is, you know, quite fitting and quite cool. But also just the inclusion of all of the flesh pieces, because there's not a lot of them. The majority of them appeared in the Star Wars Ultra Build sets. Uh, but the ways he's used them here is quite fitting. You know, that um, shell piece there for the, the head design and uh, just some of those flesh um, bone pieces there for the sort of arm and hands to a degree. It doesn't really have hands per se on this mock, but it still kind of gets the job done. The actual ball on that uh, uh, Hero Factory joint, it, it still kind of looks like that of a hand. But, you know, the fact that you can see that pop of flesh there, it looks like, you know, what you would expect to see on a humanoid character like that. So it still gets the job done, but uh, just a nice way of using those colors and uh, it actually quite effectively looking like Eddie Brock, even though it's not a sort of very detailed, realistic version of him. The fact that he's really paid attention to the colors and the kind of general shape uh, of 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 him uh, gets the job done and it works perfectly, you know. So I think this is a, 
absolutely awesome mock and very effectively represents the source material there and is a great way of interpreting the theme. And hey, I'm sure if you're listening, you, you, you've probably seen a Marvel movie or two. So, you know, there's a lot of, uh, certainly a lot of inspiration you can get from all the different characters and villains and things from those movies. So uh, yeah, a lot you can get some ideas from over there. Really, really solid mock here. Let's move on to the final mock. This is by Chris Karnak and this is Deep Sea Angler. Again, this is another way of interpreting the theme in a very different way. This one, uh, the theme was bony fish, and so he wanted to build an anglerfish, because it seems quite fitting. But then um, Chris looked up the, the word angler, and uh, this is what he wrote here. So angler is a noun, and it is a person who fishes with a rod and a line. Uh, so an anglerfish, he kind of combined the two. So the uh, sort of, I don't know, I don't know what they're quite called on an anglerfish, but the little antenna with the little light at the front of it there. He's, you know, put a little uh, hook on it there to kind of be a little bit of a play on words with the actual hook of, uh, you know, the, the term angler, which we just talked about. So, you know, a slight little way of playing around with it, and it works quite well. And, and overall, too, he's built a fantastic looking anglerfish here with this uh, really beautiful, uh, well-shaped body design that looks pretty similar to the uh, to an original, you know, anglerfish. It's really awesome, you know, toothy mouth design here with some quite large fangs poking out there. Very cool. And I don't know, just in general, it's just a, a really well-designed, awesome-looking uh, little mock here. But I also wanted to specifically focus on that. A lot of the mocks that we spoke about today were some of the, the really, you know, shining examples uh, of um, the Bio Cup, and this is still uh, certainly another shining example of an entry into it. But this is certainly a smaller scale build, not using as many pieces or not as large in size. And I think it's also worth noting that you can still build a really solid mock even if it is a bit smaller. You know, Yoda once said, size matters not. So, you know, if you've got a whole bunch of pieces, if you don't have a lot or, or I don't know, you're just a little nervous about entering or whatever, it doesn't matter if you build something small, you build something large or whatever, just enter, just have a bit of fun, build something cool and see how far you get. Because, yeah, at the end of the day, as long as you build something fun, have a bit of fun as you do so, that's all that matters, you know? So, fantastic mock, even though it's a bit smaller than the others, it still really shines, still really pops and still looks really cool. So there you go. That's it for this episode of... Uh, the well this is the final episode of the 2020 bionicle uh bio cup coverage but uh additionally that's uh, a whole bunch of mocks that can hopefully inspire you for the 2021 bio cup uh or in general hey these are some cool mocks hopefully they gave you a few ideas or two thank you very much for watching if you want to submit some of your own mocks to the show the submission email is currently on your screen additionally there's links in the description to the bio cup group be sure to check it out learn everything you need to and hey enter the bio cup it'll be a lot of fun Additionally, in the description are links to my own social media, so if you want to see some of the stuff I've got going on over there, that's the place to check it out. And also, there are links to the mocks that you saw in today's episode, so be sure to check out some of the other stuff these people have built. They're very talented builders, and they deserve a bit of love. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Bye for now.